Welcome to Akron's 21st Century Local History Club. My name is Aaron Tandy and I will be your interviewer today. Could you tell me your name, please, sir? Pardon? Could you tell me your name, please? Lauren Whiting. Lauren Whiting. Okay. Have you always lived in Akron, sir? Have you always lived in Akron? No. Okay. When did you move to Akron? It's the uh, fall of 1941. Okay. Where did you live beforehand? A place called Downers Grove, Illinois. Grove, Illinois. What made you decide to move to Akron? Uh, my dad was an engineer, and he had some ideas about cutting out parts for airplanes. Mm -hmm. And he came up here and talked to Bell Aircraft and, and Curtis Wright, and they both offered him a job. So we moved up here. He, he worked for Bell. Okay. So your father chose Akron as a location when he moved up here to take that job? Well, my father lived here when he was a boy, too. Ah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your main deciding force in coming back to Akron was your father's job? Pardon? The reason you came back to Akron yeah, was your father's job? Yeah, for his job, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, his mother lived here, too, and he wanted to be with her. I understand. Uh, could you give me your current occupation or any jobs you have had? Well, before I went to service, I used to run a uh, turret lathes for Bell. Okay. And then... Uh, uh, before I moved up here, I used to be in charge of an outfit. We had 35 newsboys, and I was in charge of newsboys. And then I worked for Bell, and then on, after the war, I worked for the, uh, the traction company in Buffalo, the bus company in Buffalo. I was, I was a mechanic. Okay. Now, you mentioned the war. When did you enlist? Uh, January 28th, 19... Uh, I, I was sworn in January 20th, 1942. I enlisted in late uh, 41. Late 41. Okay, so you battled in World War II? Yes. Okay, where approximately in Europe did you go? Where did I go? Mm -hmm. I was in uh, six or seven invasions, all in the Pacific. So you were Navy? Yeah. And what was your specific job title? I was a, uh, when I got out of the chief motor machinist mate. Okay. And what was it like being positioned in the Pacific? What do you remember about it most? Well, most ships have a home port. Mm -hmm. right? and, and sometime during a year or so, they go to our home port. The ships in the Pacific didn't have a home port because they travel so slow. <laughs> It would take them two months to go to their home port. So we never, we never uh, went to a home port. We never uh, went on liberty. We never went to a place with any civilized people. I was on a ship for 30 months. Wow. So we just, we just go from one invasion to the other. We, 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 we'd come back. Uh, most of the time, we worked out of Guadalcanal, and on the way back, they'd ask us about our availability. Mm -hmm. And we were telling 24 hours after we were in the water hole. So we then were, so we load up a gun, go right out. They, these things were um, at very short supply. Right. And this is a picture of the boat you served on. No, that's a picture of the boat I brought back from uh, uh, Crete. From Crete. And how long ago was that? In the, in the fall of, uh, 19, of 2000 and the spring of 2001. Okay, and what made you go back to retrieve this boat? The, uh, I was invited. You're invited? Uh, we, we have an LSC convention. We've got about 10,000 members. Mm -hmm. We had a convention in Las Vegas, and uh, uh, they invited me to go back. Uh, bring help. Bring, they, they asked me to help bring it back, right? Mm -hmm. So I told them I would do that. Right? So we we uh, uh, this isn't a government ship. It's our ship. We own it. You own it. All oh, right. We we have an association. We own it. Twenty-seven of us bought it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's our ship. So we we went over we went over to uh, uh, Crete and uh, and uh, uh, we had a good ship but but it was sabotaged. Uh, okay. So then we went over and they gave us this derelict 
and uh, we rebuilt it and got it running and brought it back. Bad, bad shape it was. Uh, what do you do with it now? It's, uh, since we brought it back, we put it, uh, uh, we put it in dry dock. We spent $155,000 in dry dock to have the bottom clean, all the place, all the weak place replaced, and the cracks and the seams welded. And uh, General Motors, mm -hmm. uh, these were General Motors locomotive engines that ran it. General Motors gave us all the parts necessary to repair it. Uh -huh. And an outfit in New Orleans came and repaired it. And uh, they took the small boats, another school took the small boats, and they took them to the school, took the engines out, and they rebuilt all the engines as a, as a training project. Now, this summer, we're going to bring it up to Mississippi. Fourth of July will be in, New, in uh, St. Louis. It, it's a uh, it's a mobile museum. Okay. It's going to be one year on the east coast, one year on the west coast, one year on the lakes. Right. Next next year, which will be the anniversary of the D-Day invasion, we're going to take it back to Normandy mm -hmm. and uh, uh, to England and Normandy. Okay. The engine will be rebuilt, and we're, t we're going to take it back to England and Normandy. And then when we bring it back, and then the year after that, we'll probably be on the East Coast, and then one year on the West Coast, and then one year we'll come into the lakes. So it'll be a traveling museum where people have given us tanks and trucks and jeeps and stuff to uh, make it into a museum. Okay. And you mentioned that a school rebuilt these smaller boats here? Mm-hmm. Now, are those a separate ship entirely, or are they inside the large aircraft? They're up here. Aircraft? See those arms sticking out? Mm -hmm. That will pick up those facilities. That, that ship there, when it was new, only could take two. But the one we brought back, we could, they convert, we bring four of those boats back. Okay. And they just, and they just they were on a dab it, and they bring them up and put them on the, on the deck, above the deck. And these small ships were used for personnel only, or were they? No, those vehicles are what they call uh, BCVP, as a vehicle craft for vehicles and personnel. That that boat would carry a jeep. You can see in a picture in the front there, they're bringing a, a, an ambulance out of us, one of the small boats. Mm -hmm. We could carry ambulances, and jeeps, and small trucks. Okay. The but ship itself, we carried. Uh, we carry anything. If it wasn't more than 14 foot square, we could carry it. Huh. Now, were you ever on these ships during the invasions, or were you mainly on the larger yeah, ships? Yeah, I was on, on every invasion, yeah. Mm -hmm. We went to uh, the Philippines, uh, New Guinea, Port Moresby, uh, uh, um, Guam, all that, all this one island right after the other. Generally, generally, either carried tanks or uh, a lot of times tanks or alligators. Alligators? Oh. Well, that's a type of vehicle. Oh, okay, I understand. <laughs> it's, it's a uh, tank that floats. Okay. The tank, and then also we carried uh, 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 alligators and, and, and tanks, and sometimes we would carry uh, what they called ducks. They were they were. Uh, uh, trucks that floated. They're a regular truck, but they they floated, right. and they they had the, the propeller, you know, <laughs> and the wheel. Would, the truck would just go out of the ship or go up on the beach, and they'd disengage the propeller, and then they would drive away. Hmm. Were those common in use? Like, were those found on these ships, and they'd lower them into the water? Or? Pardon? Were these? Were those found on the larger types of ships, and then they just drive up onto the shore? Or? Yeah, <laughs> we we could drive up on the shore, but sometimes we didn't do that. Sometimes we would we would anchor out, and they'd send they, the alligators would go out and float in, right? <laughs> or the ducks would go out and they would go in, or we go on the beach and they'd unload the tanks. We carried we carried ammunition, mm -hmm. we carried uh, fuel, we carried gasoline, food, anything they needed. 
Uh, some of them could even carry railroad cars. We didn't carry railroad cars, but some of them could carry railroad cars. Huh. You know, they had tracks. They would they would go up on a beach, hook the tracks on the ship to the tracks on them, and then just pull the cars out, and and they had to load the railroad cars ready to go. Amazing. Then on the top on the top of it, these were 50 foot wide. Right? Right. So we could carry four or five rows of trucks or jeeps or ambulances and uh, uh, trailers with water. Mm -hmm. And when, they, when we got the jeeps, when we got the tanks up, we had an elevator. We lower them down, and we then they would take them off. So we the top the top deck we covered with trucks and jeeps and tanks or trucks and jeeps and mobile equipment, not heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right, and when did you get out of the service? Uh, January 31st of 45. 45, so shortly after the war ended? Yeah. I, I, we, were, we, were in, uh, we were in the States in August when the war, when they dropped the bomb on Japan. Mm -hmm. We were being uh, uh, refitted to invade Japan, right. and uh, uh, when we when we got when we we took we got it we took it back to Pearl Harbor, and then I got the ch I was sent off, mm -hmm. and then it was it was uh, well, it didn't make it. it was supposed to go to Japan, but it didn't make it. <laughs> were you glad to go home? Certainly, because no, no. no. you know, we had no liberty. Right? Maybe you go on a, on the old, uh, a, a beach and have a, a can of beer or something. Well, mm -hmm. But we never, we never went with any civilized people. <laughs> Once we did. And you said that you were being refitted when they dropped the bomb. Did you have any knowledge that that was going to happen? Like, no. Did they tell you we, anything? Or? The day they dropped the bomb, they told us that you're going to leave tomorrow for Pearl. And. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the next day we went over and picked up a load of troops that were going to invade Japan, and we took them to Pearl. And I got off the ship. And they were going to take them to Pearl, and the ship broke down, so they, they didn't go to Pearl. <laughs> They'll go to Japan. So after you got out of the service, you moved back to Akron? I was here during the, my family lived there all during the war. So you moved back in with your family and that's when yeah. you took the job with the yeah. bus then, then, I, then I, I went to work for the traction company. Uh, I was a bus mechanic. Okay. So uh, you're currently the owner of Whiting Roll-Up Doors? Pardon? You're currently the owner of Whiting Roll-Up Doors? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you found that company? Um, had several names, a couple of different names. Uh, we actually started in, 19, in uh, 1947, mm -hmm. but in 1953 we incorporated, and we started making truck doors. That's when we started making truck doors in '53. Okay, what interested you to do this, or what possessed you to start the company? Uh, we make garage doors for garages, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, a fellow from Boston came up. And they asked if we could put a door on a truck. Mm -hmm. Well, we said to, to send a truck up. Mm -hmm. And he sent 50 brand new trucks up. <laughs> but we didn't have any design or any doors, right? Well, then the place burned down. Right? Right. So the first thing we'll do was to get those 50 doors, those 50 trucks done, right? And we were up at the place up there in the corner there, that brown building. Mm -hmm. And we made those 50 doors, and then we just kept on making them. What corner? Where? What building was that you were in? We're, we're uh, right there at the corner of Roots, uh, uh, well, it used to be, be Sweeney Chevrolet. It's, uh, uh, it's where you go up Buell Street, Main Street, there's a building there right on the corner. That's okay, how we start. That's where we started out, yeah. On Buffalo Street? Is that on Buffalo Street? No, it's uh, Buell. Doesn't Buell go right up to Maine, right? Oh, okay, on the corner of Maine. Yeah, it's from Maine and, and Buell, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, uh, after the fire, 
Uh -huh. mm -hmm. A fellow, he was running that, right? and he wasn't making any money. So he says, uh, if you'll take it over, I'll move out. So he moved out when we moved in. And then, then, we, then later on, we bought that place down to where we are now. They used to make bowling pins there. <laughs> where on were Cedar you? Cedar Street. Pardon? On Cedar Street, they made bowling yeah. pins? Yeah, Norm Brewer made bowling pins up for years and years. <laughs> uh, where were you located before the fire occurred? Before the fire on Jackson Street. Jackson Street? Where you know where Cold Spring Construction is? Yes. Right across the street there was a big cannon factory. We were in that. Okay. And what year was the fire in? What year was the fire? Um... About, about 1950. 1950? Wait for the announcements to finish up. Okay. The, so 1950, after that you moved up to Main Street, and did the business just take off from there after this man asked you to build the original 50 doors? Uh, well, we, my brother started selling them, right? And uh, the second order we got, uh, we, we see sold one off, and he said, we'll put three doors in. You know, one in Buffalo, one in Boston, one someplace else. And if you don't like them, we'll take them out. Right? Before they had them 30 days, they ordered 100. Mm -hmm. huh. But then we just, we just went on from there. We just went on from there. And, and, and uh, of course, now a roll-up door is, uh, on a truck body, it's unusual if they don't have one. Mm -hmm. On trailers, about 50% of them have them. Mm -hmm. And is your company the largest manufacturer of them, or are there others? Oh, there's two of them. We're the largest, by far. Okay. When it first started, were you amazed at how much the demand was for them? About no. How quickly they no, because... Uh, uh, To close the rear of a truck, right, mm -hmm. they use a tarp, right, or what they call a chain gate. It was a series of chains made into a gate, you know. Right. Well, the material, get, your load would get wet. People could see it and jump up there and steal it, you know. You couldn't lock it or anything. So when we started, they, went, they took right off. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you, you don't hardly see a truck without a roll-up door mm -hmm. and, and about 50% of the trailers. Most of the long, the long haul trailers, uh, they don't have them. All the 28 footers, uh, they all have them. We were making 600 doors a day there a couple of years ago when we were busy. Wow. Yes, yeah, so we make we make a lot of doors, and we make them all over the world. Uh, how spread out are you? How many factories do you have now? We have licensees. We got one in Korea, one in Japan, one in Australia, one in New Zealand. One in England, one in France, uh, one in Brazil, one in Mexico. Uh, we're, we're all over. So you've covered every continent. Pardon? You've covered every continent. Yeah, every, we feel we uh, uh, we got a guy who did over now. He's over. He's, he went over to uh, try to get a licensee in Turkey. And we're, all, we're also trying to get a licensee in, in China, but they're kind of this, this uh, disease. <coughs> <coughs> they don't have anybody working for them. No, nobody comes to work. Aaron, fix this microphone. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, nobody comes to work, so... Uh, Put that right there. There you go. And we're, gonna, we're getting a new one in the next, this summer. We'll have, yep, this summer we'll have one in Colombia. Mm -hmm. We saw all over. Have to repeat that question. Doors? Okay, how many employees are working at Wedding Doors right now for the factory? Currently. Between three and four hundred, but so we've had it as high as six hundred. Now, is that just at the station in Akron, or is that worldwide? No, world? we got a few. We have a plant in California and one in St. Louis, and we have six or eight sales on the road. That's that's everybody. everybody. And my second question is, what inspired you in starting Wedding? What inspired you? 
Company. Well, we didn't have a job for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> the place had burned down, right? right? We didn't have a job. And we had that order for those 50 trailers. So we finished those, and then uh, we saw there was demand for it. And, and uh, we were lucky that nobody else was making doors for trucks. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that, that uh, uh, we, didn't have a, we didn't have a real serious competition. So we could make, even though we're small and inefficient, we could still make them and sell them. I have a okay. question. Was your dad in on the ground floor of starting the, the truck doors? Pardon? Was your father part of the beginning? Yeah, my, my, the first patent was in my dad's name. We, he, he was, when we started, he was 63. So he, when we started, he was 63. I have another question out here. How many doors do you make a day? Many as we can sell. We can easily make 300. Oh, wow. But sometime, one, year, one time we were making 600 How long when we were busy. You know. How long does it take to make a door? Oh, uh, I don't really know. <laughs> if, if, if you had, if you had uh, uh, 600 people working right, and we made 600 doors, it took a man one day to make a door. Do you install them also or do you sell no. them to someone who installs them? We, sell, we ship to a, a manufacturer and they install. Any more? Yeah, we have one. Okay, we have one more. Right now. <laughs> what work goes into making a door? What work goes into making a door? A lot. Mm -hmm. Because. Where are the stops? Okay. These doors are made special for trucks. Right. So, there is no hardware you can buy for them. We make our own hinges, we make our own lifting mechanism, we make our own locks, all, all the parts of the door we make. Yeah. And uh, of course then we cut up the panels and we paint them and, and uh, so 90% uh, uh, of the stuff within the door we make. We, we, buy, very, we buy a lot of raw material but we don't, we don't uh, 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 buy very many finish, we make our own rollers make our own balancers, uh, we, we roll our own springs. So most of the stuff that we use, we make, we make ourselves. We roll our own track. Mm -hmm. Have you found your production methods changing as people request more or less doors, or as? Um, <laughs> a lot of the doors are, uh, they're generating down into uh, automobile class vehicles, like these Federal Express trucks and UPS trucks. Right. And, and they want, uh, a lot of those are requiring uh, doors made out of aluminum instead of plywood. Right. And, uh, and also, of course, uh, we, uh, we change all the time. We continue all the time. We, make, we start making our own rollers. Uh, uh, we, we, have a, we have a pretty big engineering staff. But, the, but yeah, the, the doors change all the time. And another, another problem we have is when we ship into these foreign countries, the problem with duty. Uh -huh. So they, they want to use something local. So they, they, we have to try to, to uh, accommodate our doors to the raw materials that they can provide. So what the door is made out of really depends on where you're selling it or who you're selling it to? Do we what? what the door is made out of really depends on either who you're selling it to or where you're selling it? No, a, a lot depends on where we're selling, who we're selling it to. Like UPS and, and Federal Express and Post Office, they want metal doors. Right. But most people use plywood, a plastic or a covered plywood. Are the metal okay. doors heavier or lighter? About the same, about the same. Of course, you don't have any rotten metal doors. Huh. But, but they're on the top of metal doors, uh, 
if you hit them with a freight or damage, plywood door will straighten out. But on a federal express truck and a UPS truck where the stuff is all carried in racks, they don't get damaged, and that's what they use. Mm -hmm. I have another question. How many years has Whiting Roll-Up Doors been in business? How many years have you been in business with Whiting Roll-Up Doors? This is our 50th year. Wow, congratulations. Happy anniversary. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, uh, we, we, we started in 2003, right? September of 2003. And this, this is our 50th year. When did you move into your new building on the corner of Lewis Road and Cedar Street? When did you move into the new building on the corner of Lewis and Cedar? We moved there in about uh, 1958. It was, a, it, was a, it was a bowling pen factory. And they quit making bowling pens, and we moved on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right, so after that, a little bit more about your life than History in Akron, you said, have you ever met any real famous people or presidents? Or? No, not no? really, no, 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 I, I, I uh, 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 no, not really. Hmm. I, uh, when we came back from overseas, uh, uh, Dale Evans and, uh, uh, Roy, Rogers. Roy Rogers was there. Yeah. I came back on a heavy cruiser, and, and I, from Pearl, I came back on a heavy cruiser. And they were there, and they sang and whatnot. You know. They're famous. But I, I never met any, anybody that. Uh, Whose hand did you shake? Hey, pardon? You. Whose hand did you shake? Our unfortunate, unfortunate President Nixon. I'm uh -huh. sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when did you happen to meet him? Uh, I was at a convention. Huh. And uh, he was he was he was in the hotel, and he came through the hotel glad head and everybody. That was before he got in jail, you know, huh. before he got in all that trouble. Mm. He was up in dark. Do you have an engineering degree? No. 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 We we I, I've got the several patents, but I, I don't have an engineering degree. Uh, so you're uh, just naturally brilliant? Yeah. When I, uh, <laughs> when, when I, when I, a lot of times I represent the company in lawsuits, but they won't take my testimony cause I, <laughs> because uh, I'm, not, I'm not an engineer. You have to be a... Yeah. I have another question. We ask this to everybody we interview. Where, do you remember 9-11? Where were you on 9-11? Well, on September 11th, yeah. 2001, she wants to know if you remember it clearly. Do you remember where you were when that happened? Yeah, I was down at the shop work, huh? Yeah. Frankly, I didn't realize the significance of it at the time. Yeah, but then when they, did, when they came in and said the whole world is falling down, right? we hit it on TV, right? And then we could see the whole, the whole, uh, the whole thing collapse. You know? That's bad news. Now, when you saw that, did it remind you of all of the attack on Pearl Harbor? No, because well, well, I was an engineering department, right? Mm -hmm. I just sat down there with those screaming engines, right? And the planes would be shooting down and everything. Nobody didn't bother me because I never saw any. I only saw one plane get shot down. So I, 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 all my time was spent in the engine. Do you have any family and children? Pardon? Do you have any family and children? Family and children? Do you Groups have any? Groups of a real interesting group. <laughs> I've got I've got seven of them. Tell us about your children. Well, I, I've got I've got uh, my two my I, my my two my two daughters by my first wife. They they were there. They worked for. Uh, um, uh, taking care of retarded people. For uh, one of them worked for the state, and and and, uh, and the other one worked for People Incorporated. Right? And Bob, he works here for uh, the village. You know, he's with water department. And Rodney works at the door plant. And then my, my two, uh, the other children. Uh, one of them is a uh, high iron worker. 
Uh, and the other one is uh, he works in communication with for uh, a phone company. Then and, and the daughter, she's she's just had six kids. <laughs> wow. So how many grandchildren do you have? I think twenty-two. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And, and, and I think five great five great grandchildren. We, we've got quite a quite a group of. Uh, you have a big family. Like at Christmas, either like sixty <laughs> people. Uh, wow. wow. <laughs> well, we, how we many get, how many of them will go into the business with you? Well, Rodney works at the door company, but the, the really uh, the door the car company is managed by my brother's sons now, by Pat and Mike. Uh huh. Pat and Mike. And your family is going off in different directions now? Pardon? Your family will go in different directions now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Outside of Rodney. He still works down here at the door plant. Does Rodney have children? Two. So they may continue in his footsteps. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Tell us, please, before we finish today, what is your favorite memory of living in Akron? Oh, I don't know. I enjoy every, I enjoyed every minute of it. I wasn't here too long. You know, I, uh, I was sick in the, in the fall of 41, right? And when I came up here in 42, I, I, in the spring of 42, I went to school, right? And then I, right after that, then I went in the service. They didn't let me graduate because uh, uh, I went down to get a diploma, right? And they said, we can give you a diploma if you go to school full time and, and have passing grades. We can give you a diploma if you work at an airplane plant, you know, and they want you. But we can't give you one if you do both. So, so I got, I, I, uh, I got my greetings from the government, right? and they, they had an announcement in the paper right? there will be no more enlistments because they wanted everybody to go through sex selective service. Right? So I was working nights, so I quit at 5 o'clock in the morning on the last day of enlistments. I went down to the old post office. And I got there about seven o'clock. By the time they opened up, there was four or five thousand people there. But they only took twenty-five of us. Wow! And and uh, uh, when he opened the door, oh, he said, "I need twenty-five." But before I got the door closed, there were about thirty-five in there. So they took us all. Yeah. Since my, they were they, these guys were all going to go in a, in the CB. But since my name was Whitey, and I was the last one processed, so I got sent in the regular Navy, uh -huh. which was lucky for me. But you lived in Akron after you came back from the war, correct? Yes. And did you like living in Akron at that point? Oh, yeah. You know, a Akron is, uh, uh, if you take a look at it, right, objectively, we're in the rundown house in town, right? There are very few poor people. They have their own water, their own electric. It's a fantastic little town. Most people don't uh, don't uh, appreciate it. But uh, it's a good. There's no uh, very little crime. It's a great place to live. The school system is fantastic. You know, every everything about it is. Uh, Something you would desire if you're looking for some place to live. No, I I thought it was, it was, it was a. It was a uh, I went. I was in Buffalo last week, and I, I went down with it. So now, you know, most of Buffalo is not fit to live in. Half the houses are burned out, or falling down, or vacant. It's 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 uh, not fit to live in. It's in bad shape. Oh, yeah, uh, you go you go down to a residential bubble not even fit to live. Uh, you wouldn't even keep a dog there. Yeah.
Huh. Uh. So, how, what are your takes on how Akron's changed? What do you remember the biggest change being in our town? The only thing that changed in Akron was prices. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when we came here, right, practically every lot had a house on it, right? Mm -hmm. so, so since since we came here, since now, there have been very, very, oh. very few houses built, right? It's so, just, it's, it's, uh, uh, so so falling off. It's just a great little town, and it, it, it hasn't gone through. Go. They added to the school, right? Remodeled a couple of churches. Mm -hmm. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. They built that little that little plaza down there, but Akron, like it was uh, 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 when we came here in 1940, 41. Although now we have McDonald's. Pardon? <laughs> Now we have McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I guess I'm lazy. <laughs> I like to sit down with the waitress. Yes. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, uh, they're fantastic. Everything's clean and neat and nice. And neat. But I'm just old fashioned. I like to sit down with the waitress. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add to the presentation today? Anything no, in no, particular no, you'd like no, us to know? No. Oh, well, a couple of things we didn't talk about. Sure. Getting the ship, right? Yes. Mm. We went over there. Some of the people went over in, in June, right? Mm -hmm. They were there in June, they were there in July, and they were in August, right? I went over in August, August 28th. Right? I was there in September, October, and we couldn't get the ship released. Right? <laughs> and and uh, they th they thought they could wear us down, right? Well, in the interim, I said to them, well, let's show them we're serious. Right? Let's get some batteries and get the main engines running. So we spent four thousand dollars for batteries. Right? Wow! Wow! And, and, and got the main engines running right now. When all the when all those girls cut in, you could hear them for fifteen miles around because <laughs> they were a big howl. You know? So they knew those engines were running, right? And uh, they, uh, we would go we would go to the ambassador in Athens, you know, and, and nothing would happen, right? So finally. One day they come in and off. I, we, he says, that I was on watch. He said, uh, write me down. I'm going to go off the ship. I so I did. He came back in about a half an hour. And he said, uh, put it out in the bulletin board. We're leaving here Sunday morning. Right. <laughs> now, this ship was like a derelict. We didn't have a boiler or anything, so we couldn't eat on it. We didn't eat on the ship. We would go downtown, right? So I was on watch for 48. When I went downtown at 8 o'clock, I went to the hardware store for a wrench or something. The guy said, I hear you're leaving Sunday morning. I went to the restaurant. He said, I hear you're leaving Sunday morning. <laughs> went to the candy, the ice cream store. The lady said, I hear you're leaving Sunday morning. <laughs> and I asked her, I said, how in four hours that everybody in this town know we're leaving. There's a casino in town. They were running a book and the odds were 10 to 1 <laughs> that we would never get out, that we would never leave, right? <laughs> so when Sunday morning came down, they told me to start the main engines. I went down and started the main, you know. And the guy who ran that Greek Navy base came down there, all in full uniform, which you never saw him, he said, if you try to move this ship, then I'm going to run it aground. Because you don't have release. So when we told him, we shut the man, they told me, well, but he said, I'll go over tomorrow and uh, 
see what I can do about getting a raise. Cause we went, we had to leave in early November in order to get home for Christmas. So when uh, he came back, he said, uh, <coughs> "We said, long you're over there, go see the police chief in Akron, the mayor of, of Athens, you know, the mayor, and find out <coughs> if we need any special permit to pick at the American Embassy." Because we were really, uh, so he came back. He must have, he must have told it after, uh, that. Uh, well, first he said, I don't want you here. He said, I need this dock. He said, I got a destroyer I want to bring here and work on. I can't bring it here. You got a dock tied up. He said, I want you out of here. So anyway, he came back the next day and he said, the ambassador will be over here with your papers <laughs> tomorrow. At two o'clock, he didn't come at two. Finally, he came at seven. But he had a great big, with a great big, like a big sunflower stamp on it. You know? <coughs> he said, "You can go." And he had a letter with it. <coughs> Excuse me. He said, uh, "All ships are registered someplace. Right? This ship is not registered. If anybody has an occasion to stop, I would appreciate it. They let let you go." And let it go. So nobody bothered. We thought maybe Libby or somebody would come out and try to stop it. So nobody bothered. In the middle of, a little of the Mediterranean, one of the engines broke down. Hmm. So we can't, there's, a, there's a big naval base on southeastern Spain, right at the entrance of the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. They said, don't come here. You're not welcome. We're not going to we're not going to render you any services. Right. That was a U.S. naval base. Yeah, big navy base. Eh? Well, all we wanted to borrow some tools. They said, "No, don't come here. You're not welcome." So we went to Gibraltar. Well, the people in Gibraltar said, "You're perfectly welcome." They treated us like you know, like long lost relatives, you know. But they said. Uh, the union shop here. <laughs> he said, "We can't, we can't let you come in here and work in a union shop and and put our people out of work. But we will repair the ship." And we came in and they repaired it. They left on Friday afternoon, and I said to a couple of guys, "Let's go down and start those mains and make sure we're ready to go." You know. We had a blown piston, so, so we had to call them back. They came back and took that piston off. I replaced it. And they did it on Sunday, eh? And I asked the guy, I said, could you work some overtime on Sunday? He said, not unless we can stop for a, for a spot of tea. I said, well, you stop for a spot of tea, eh? And then they came back to work about 9 o'clock. Monday, they worked all day. And I asked them again, I said, could you, would you they weren't done, would, could you work so they fit? He said, uh, we're still waiting. The manager told me to get this thing out of here. <laughs> and to stay, <laughs> to stay here as long as it takes. <laughs> so about 4 o'clock Monday, they pick, uh, what, Tuesday morning, they worked all night, about 4 o'clock Tuesday morning, they pick up their tools and left, so you're ready to go, right? right. Then we went when we we went across the Atlantic in the middle of winter. Now we didn't uh, we were going to go go south past part of Africa and then turn west. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, we said we'll go right straight across. That'll <laughs> save time. <laughs> but we went right straight across. Well now. Now, we didn't have too much fuel. One more, when we when we were over there, we were supposed to, American company was going to give us the fuel, right? And then they decided they wouldn't. <laughs> so uh, uh, the, the senator from from Texas, he got all this through the re resolution through Congress. This was all done the resolution through Congress, right? Now we said we'll call we'll call the senator's uh, secretary, name was Priscilla. Mm -hmm. So they said, no, what to do? Well, all they do is call Priscilla. We called Priscilla, and she said, uh, 
I have some friends that work for British Petroleum. Within, within 10 hours, British Petroleum said, you get, if you can get the app, we'll give you all the fuel you need. Where did you have to get to? Sorry? Where did you have to get to? Athens. So we bought 1,500 gallons. We had something. We bought 1,500. We got to Athens, and the guy said, uh, I'm supposed to give you 200,000 liters. Mm -hmm. So he gave us 200,000 liters, and he said, uh, maybe there's some air on that line. So he gave us 5,000 liters more. Mm -hmm. And then we, when we went across the ocean, eh, we got to NASA, and... Uh, uh, we, went, we were supposed to go in there, you know, and we said, well, well what does it cost? Mm -hmm. well, I said, we charge a thousand dollars a day right. for the pier. Well, he said, well, we said, what do you charge a low budget outfit? Right. <laughs> he said, if you can get in there and get out of here in five hours, we won't charge you anything. So we got in there, they gave us more, more lubricating oil, 35,000 British Petroleum gave us more lube oil, 35,000 more gallons of, of, of diesel oil. Before the five hours up, they had a tug there, they turned us around and took us out. They did, so they didn't charge us anything. <laughs> so uh, they, they, were, they were really, uh, British Petroleum was really, uh, they were good to us. Yeah. And when we were in that yard in Gibraltar, Friday night we paid them eighteen thousand dollars for the work they'd done. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, Sunday when we discovered that thing still needed more work, they must have thought they should have taken care of it. So they came and fixed us. They worked all day, all day, uh, all day Sunday, all day money. So they didn't charge us anything. Mm -hmm. No, they they they, they were. Uh, uh, for, uh, England had two hundred of these. When they were married, they made, 12, they made, they made 1,051 of them, and England had 200 of them. So they're uh, familiar with, uh, mm -hmm. we were walking down the street in the Gibraltar, a young girl come running out of a, of a, of a, uh, a restaurant, she said, are you guys on that LST? My friend, I said, yeah, and she said, I'd like to see it. Well, Rocky says, uh, come down tomorrow and I'll show it to you. Mm -hmm. Come to find out her father rebuilt them during the war. He works in a shipyard in Scotland. That's it. Where did you dock in the United States? Went to Mobile. Alabama? Yeah. That's the only place that we weren't too welcome, right? We, Why we were, were you not welcome? The Navy was against bringing the ship back. The Coast Guard was against bringing the ship back. The the, part, the, uh, the uh, uh, custom with the uh, we couldn't get it. We couldn't get any, any help from anybody. Right? What was their reason for not wanting the ship back here? Uh, no sensible one. Uh, there was no sensible reason. But anyway, we got some mobile. The school was out. The bands were down there, and, yeah. and we got a, we got a, every one of us got a welcome back card. You know, the, how the kids in second and third grade make these these. They they every one of them a welcome back card with our name on it. Well, the restaurant this guy said, uh, if you'll come down, he said he he bought a free dinner for for uh, uh, the crew and their wives, right? And we said, well, you know we. Uh, these guys have been away for six months, what not, and we don't know. Well, he says, bring anybody you want to, just tell them from your LSC, and he said, they can have their dinner at my cost. Mm -hmm. And British Petroleum was going to have a, a reception, right? A dinner. And we said, well, you know, uh, I, we don't know how many people will come. Well, he said, we'll turn it into a reception. He had like four or five hundred people there. And those receptors are expensive. How big was the crew that brought the ship over? Pardon? How big was the crew? Twenty-eight of us, and uh, we had twenty-eight of us and a, and a reporter. Huh. Uh, this, this reporter came with a. Uh, he just come from Bosnia, right? And 
he wouldn't come back with it. We told him no, cause we, but, but he went back and forth. And finally, they put this guy on the crew. Right? But he stood watch with, with me, right? And, and he took pictures all the way back. Now, the, the, his, uh, his boss, his wife's dad, was on an LST. And, and she, uh, when he died, all his friends came to see her. He'd been contacting him, you know? So she did some research on that, right? And she made, she made a, a uh, television thing on it, right? It, it, it's been on television. So, so she had him come there, and we were on, we had, we had, we were on a history channel one night. Wow. Yeah. We, we, we were on a history channel. So now you have a floating museum that's privately owned? Yeah, we're gonna, when we get it done, we're going to have tanks, six by six, jeeps, uh, 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 ambulances, wow. all, 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 all these different things for the Second World War. That's wonderful. Yeah. And it says it'll, it's, it'll be the only... There's all kinds of battleships, so this will be the only one that'll be floating. I will, I will keep it floating as long as, long as it'll... Uh, for what the, when the work you done, we could run another 20 years. Wow. Well, yeah, because we, we redid the bottom and we rebuilt the engines and we rebuilt the generator. We, could, we, got all, we put a new communication. We could run another 20 years. Wow, I think that's a wonderful thing you've done. The, That'll be one left where I'm pushing up daisies. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Well, sir, we're out of time today, but on behalf of Akron's 21st Century Local History Club, I'd like to thank you for coming in. Thank you for and having me. It has been an honor talking to you today. Thank you.